This is going to be a quick little pool physics lesson for just regular people like me and everybody else out there. Um, we're going to talk about how these two balls react, how the cue ball and the object ball, how the two balls react when they hit each other. So what just happened there was I just tossed both of these balls into each other at about equal speeds. When they hit, they came apart from each other at equal speeds. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. That means if I've got these balls all frozen to the rail like this, and I'll take one ball out. If, if I take my cue and I do a stop shot, I want this ball to slide. I don't want any forward rolling momentum. I just want a straight sliding into this ball. So if I do that, I'm going to get six ounces in, which means I should get six ounces out, which is going to be one ball. Each ball weighs about six ounces, including the cue ball. So six ounces in is six ounces out. Um, if I could roll two balls at the same time into this mess of balls, let's put another ball down here. So now I have four balls here, all frozen to the rail. And if I take two balls and could keep them together and roll them without putting my the force of my, and the weight of my hand into the hit, I don't, I don't want to be touching them. I want 12 ounces to hit this. I'm going to lose 12 ounces. The only reason I'm showing that is because the same thing applies every time you shoot the cue ball into the object ball. So if I've got the cue ball setting here, and the only way I can make the cue ball roll beyond the 10 ball is if I allow it to roll into the 10 ball because they both weigh six ounces. So if the cue ball slides into this 10 ball, it just slides in there, I'm gonna get that. It slides all the way to here. It meets another object that weighs the same amount that it weighs. So the cue ball stops and it imparts its speed and direction to the other object and it goes. Now, if this ball weighed more than the cue ball, then the cue ball would slide into this ball and then the extra weight or mass of this ball would make the cue ball bounce back. And I can prove that because I have a cue ball that is light. This cue ball right here only weighs about four ounces compared to the six ounce balls. So if I put this ball here and I shoot this one into there, the same stop shot, I'm not gonna put any backspin on this ball, but watch what it does because it is lighter than the 12 ball. I did not put any draw on the ball. I hit it in the center. It is just lighter. I, mean, I can even hit it above right here, watch this. <laughs> I hit it above center and got a stop out of it. The reason why is it's so light that this ball forces this ball back in the direction it came from. This one exerts 100% of its energy into this ball, but it can't, this ball, this can't get our equal reaction here because this ball weighs more. So it kicks this ball out of the way. This ball still moves, but the leftover energy that's sitting here shoves this ball back. Um, with a regular cue ball, you don't get that. They both weigh six ounces. So if a cue ball slides into this ball, it stops. This ball takes about 100% of its energy and goes. If I hit it with draw, you know, I shoot the ball with draw, the cue ball is going to, the cue ball is going to slide. It's spinning backward, but it's sliding across the cloth. It's not rolling forward. It is sliding across the cloth. It's going to hit that ball, stop momentarily, and then draw back. You don't see the stop. It happens very short time period. Now you notice 
Not one time has the cue ball rolled beyond the contact point between the balls. The only way the cue ball is going to roll beyond the front of that 15 is if I allow it to roll into it like this. The only time the cue ball is going to pass this ball is if it is rolling into that ball. If it has draw or stun, which is just, you know, the cue ball just goes straight into it like this. Watch that little sign on the side here, the little emblem. If I can hit this just right, you'll just see it slide straight, no spin. Still right there. The ball slid all the way to here, knocked the ball in. It did not pass the point where this ball was setting. It can't because they both weigh six ounces and there's an equal exchange of energy there. Now that same little theory applies when there's only a quarter inch between the balls. If it looks like this, let me make sure that's in the camera. Yes, and let's do this. The same thing applies here. The only way the cue ball can pass the edge of that six where it makes contact is if it's rolling into the six. There's no way I can hit the bottom of the ball down here or the middle of the ball and make the cue ball go over here unless I jump it. Now I can jump it, I can come down on this ball and jump and the cue ball is going to hit the slate come up and hit the edge of this six ball and go this way. So that's a lot of people will shoot this shot and jump the cue ball into it. And it's hard to call that a foul because you're not recording most of these shots in slow motion in high def. But if I were to shoot this ball like this and get the draw action but as the cue ball was in the air it may have caught the tip again I'm not sure it happened so fast you can't really see it so most people are going to call that a good shot so we're just going to look at a few more little shots here that means if I've got a ball sitting close like this I've got now I've got about two inches between that, the cue ball and the 15 ball. When you're close up, you have to just kind of give it a little jab stroke. So I would hit it like this. And then I'm rolling forward. Man, I missed the ball. I love that. Well, it saves me from getting other balls. So, if I shoot this ball firm and follow through using top, I'm going to double hit the cue ball. There's no way around it. Um, because the cue ball is going to stop when it hits the 15 ball, and then I'm going to hit it again. If I use draw, there is a big enough gap in there where I can actually shoot a little draw shot and just kind of, like I said, a little jab shot really quick and do that and draw the ball back. Okay, right here you'll see the cue stick come in and the tip hits the cue ball. This is a standard push shot anytime this happens it is a foul the balls have about a chalk distance between them cue ball comes in makes contact there and then the cue ball hits the seven ball there and the cue ball momentarily stops it would draw back because i did hit a below center it would come back a little bit if the cue weren't in the way but what happens is the cue hits it again there and then pushes it and look, it actually has backspin on it. See the backspin? It has backspin, even though it was a double hit and a push shot. Let's see here. So our next shot is elevated at about 40 degrees, 45 degrees. It's probably more like a 30 degree elevation here. But I'm going to show what happens when I hit this ball. Now this black line, I'll show you what that is. There's cue ball contact right there. Now the seven ball leaves the table just a little bit. You can see it raise up just a tiny bit. It's a little higher than, I mean the cue ball does, it's a little higher than the seven. So the center line between the balls is the solid black line. 
and then the black arrow pointing up is the only place that the cue ball can go after it caroms off the seven. It's going to carom off and go the tangent between the two balls, which is straight up in the air like that. But watch where it ends up going. It goes in the direction of the red line. As you can see, it crosses. I put a ghost seven ball in there, and the cue ball is actually on the other side of where that seven ball is. Now that's what happens here. As you can see, the, the ball goes straight up. The cue ball is actually going straight up right there. But then it hits the ferrule, and the ferrule knocks it offline, makes it go away. Now this shot would be considered a good shot if you watched it, somebody shoot the shot in person because you're not going to watch it close up like this. And they come down, they've got an angle, they hit the ball, and it draws back. So it looks like this. And um, that would show as a good shot. So I'm not saying that when you see somebody shoot a shot like this, you can always call a foul on it because it is borderline. It happens so fast, you can't really see without recording in slow motion. But you can see right there, that ball's riding along the ferrule. And the front of the ball is beyond where the seven ball used to be. When the only way it can go there is if it is pushed that way. But, like I said, if I saw somebody shoot that shot, and it happened that quickly, I would probably just go ahead and say, that's a good shot, because there it goes. Because it is possible to jump the ball and get the tip out of the way. That time I didn't really do it, but it would be hard to call it against somebody. Now, here's another one. I come in, I'm coming down on the cue ball right there. There's, there's tip contact, just like this. And now that ball doesn't leave the table. I push it straight into the seven. It can only go in one place. If it goes beyond where the seven ball is, then it's a foul or a push shot. And you can see, I pushed that. I tried to pull my tip back really quick. But I pushed that ball beyond where the seven is. Look how far it goes. But it looks good. If you're watching this shot, most people would call that a good shot, but it's really not. I pushed it through the ball. There's no way that ball should have gone beyond where that seven is located right there, the ghost ball for the seven. I pushed it all the way that far. And as seen in the first part of this video, the only way the cue ball is going to go beyond the front of that ball is if it is rolling into the ball. It's not going to, if it's sliding or you hit bottom, draw shot, there's no way it's going to go beyond the edge of the ball like this. It goes beyond the edge of the ball because I push it with the tip like that. It pushes. I even tried to pull the tip out of the way to prevent from doing it, but I did not. So that is a foul. I would call that a foul if somebody shot it. So when you jack up to shoot a shot like this, don't shoot along the center line. Shoot away like at the edge of the ball, like a 45 degree angle or something, 30 degree angle. Shoot away from the edge, from the ball, not along the center line, and you'll prevent yourself from doing that. So Now these are frozen. I can hit them any way I want. These, the cue ball and object ball act as one. They will take off together as one, and there's no way to double hit it. I've jacked up just to show, because I want to draw the ball, and if I've shot straight through it, there's no way I can get enough draw. The cue ball is going to be fighting the seven. But from jacked up like this, I can actually draw it. See, you see the tip contact? There is no double hit. It hits it and then disappears. And I get the draw. So that's a good shot. When they're frozen, you can shoot it like that. Straight on and get some cue ball action there. Now this is a similar shot. I've got just a small gap there. Now I hit it, and I get the draw. This is similar to the one where I, I pushed through it and got a stop shot. Well, this one that hits there, it should go straight up because I'm jumping the ball a little bit. See, it leaves the table, but I'm pushing it, and it goes beyond 
where the seven ball was and then draws back. Now that, if you see somebody shoot the shot, you may think it was a good shot. And there's nothing wrong with saying, yeah, good shot. Because you can't really tell in person what that shot, if it went beyond the seven or not. So um, a really good ref would probably call that a foul. Most players would probably say it was a good shot. But that really was a foul.